So sometimes in, in life and in sports and I don't know, you do everything wrong and it still works out or you make a bunch of mistakes and somehow you come up aces. That's how I feel about the Derby. And I'm going to relate this to sports in general, but of course I'm going to take a few minutes here and talk through what is one of the bigger stories in sports right now. The Kentucky Derby is right now the centerpiece of sports and controversy and replay, and everyone's got an opinion. And the problem is when when something happens in horse racing, you see a lot of people who have no idea what they're talking about offering big opinions. That's a big problem. Now, look, everyone involved with this looks bad right now. And you'll go, well, wait. They came up with the right decision. Well, hold on. I want to explain this. First of all, the Kentucky Derby, I'm bummed out as a fan because overall, you can come up with the right move, maybe, and the event was ruined. And it begins and ends with the stewards. Now, Barbara Borden, who is the head steward, she didn't turn on the objection light. She didn't do it. Didn't happen. It took two jockeys levying a complaint. And if you want to understand how rare that is, I think the last complaint was 2001 with John Velasquez. It doesn't happen. So if it was so egregious that you were going to take down a Kentucky Derby winner in maximum security, how didn't the stewards blatantly just boop hit the button? We're going to review this right away. Didn't happen. Now you get a couple of jocks who object. And what ensued to me was embarrassing. And it's symptomatic of sports in 2019. And it happens to now affect my favorite sport, horse racing. Where Barbara Borden took 23 minutes of review. It took one of the most emotional, electric moments in sports, right? The Kentucky Derby, the most exciting two minutes in sports. And and it put it in a coma. It's inexcusable to take 23 minutes and do a review. Now, look, this isn't the Kennedy assassination. There is no Zapooter film. And I don't know what angles you were looking at. If you watched it live, you saw maximum security veer over two paths. You saw him compromise. The horse is behind him. I will tell you this. If you don't watch a lot of horse racing, you don't realize how close you were to seeing a potential tragedy. That could have been a 10-car pileup, except the pileups aren't cars. They're 1,500-pound animals and little, little human beings, and it would have been a crumpled mess. When you see horses veer over, when you see horses check up, the potential for them to be put off balance, click heels, go down, all it takes is one. And what would have ensued on that type of track In a demolition derby style race like the Kentucky Derby with 20 entrants, 19 entrants, depending on the year, that could have been tragic. Now, look, the problem I have is really it's with everyone. I thought Barbara Borden and the three steward panel did a terrible job in managing the moment. First of all, if you watched it live, you saw it, especially with NBC with that wide view cam coming around the turn they don't do that for an average thursday race at saratoga they do for the derby you saw maximum security veer out now was he the best horse yep but that's not what the rule cares about it was a very dangerous move and nbc and all the commentators kept talking about the best horse that's not what the rule is do i understand how it feels cheap That the best horse didn't win? Oh, yeah, I'm struggling with that. But the rule's the rule. The problem is the horses that were directly compromised didn't end up winning the Derby. I don't know that they would have ended up winning the Derby. And it was given to Country House, who, I'm sorry, it would never pass in maximum security. Never. Now, bottom line. If you want to take the approach, the stewards got it right. And I tend to believe they got it more right than wrong based on the rules. You take into account they didn't file the objection, the jocks did. They didn't do it in a timely manner. And then the worst part, and I think it's an act of cowardice by Barbara Borden. You are the head steward for the state of Kentucky. This is the Kentucky freaking derby. 
you make a call and make history that you're going to take a derby champ down, then get your ass out there, Barb, and answer questions. For Barbara Borden to not answer questions is embarrassing, and it's an act of cowardice. And to take it a step further, for the stewards to do the unheard of step of releasing a statement, cowardly, awful. It makes the sport look awful. It makes you look awful, and it wrecks the event. Then even worse, you have the awkward interviews. I mean, Bill Mott, you just won your first derby. Oh, it's bittersweet. You know, you look at the tote board, and, you know, you want people to believe in the whole, oh, Bill, be quiet. You just won the derby. You got it handed to you. And for Gary West, and nobody knows who Gary West is unless you're a horse player, him and his wife Mary have poured tens of millions of dollars into the sport. Gary West knows better. Don't go on the Today Show and act brand new. You're like 70 and a billionaire and a guy who has spent his life in the game. Don't act brand new. Oh, the Derby shouldn't have 20 horses. Really, Gary? I must have missed that opinion the last 20 years. Oh, well, there's no reason to run in the Preakness because the, there's no triple crown on the line. Wah. Gary, you're not hurting anyone but yourself. And if your horse is ready to run in the Preakness, run him. But instead, Gary West is making it sound punitive. Well, I'm, I'm going to take him away from the game. Look, I get the bitterness. And if I own maximum security, if I were Gary West, no, I don't think I'd ever get over it. That's the Kentucky Derby, and it was ripped. Now, you go on national TV and you start crying about it, and you start bringing up arguments that no one's having. You start criticizing the Kentucky Derby and Churchill Downs and the greed angle. Gary, stop it. You've played in the same game with the same rules with the same people for a long, long time. Don't act brand new because you're not. I don't think Gary West looked good. I didn't like hearing from Bill Mott. I thought Barbara Borden looked awful. And ultimately, here's the deal. It takes the most exciting two minutes in sports, and it renders it dead on arrival. An emotional suck. 23 minutes by the end of that review, I didn't care if Snoopy won the Kentucky Derby. I just wanted a decision, and I wanted to move on with my life. And that's the problem with sports in 2019. This is where we've arrived at. Replay. Despite, like I said, I err on the side they got this more right than wrong. Even when you get it right, it feels wrong. And as a viewer, and that's what I am with the Derby, as a fan, it ruined the entire experience. All in the name of getting it right. Just like how the NFL has these moments. How the NBA has turned into a review of Palooza in the last two minutes of games. Just like the NHL still misses egregious calls while killing the momentum and energy of playoff hockey. And baseball, forget about it. I'm at a point as a fan where replay has altered how I watch games and events, and I don't like it. The NFL is a prime example where you can't even celebrate your team scoring a touchdown. One eye is going, where's the flag? And then all plays are reviewed. All scoring plays are reviewed. So the energy you want to deliver to that game and celebrate with your friends, you can't. And by the time the play is reviewed, your response is now muted. That's what happened to me with the Kentucky Derby. And as a fan of the game and someone who cares about the game and somebody who wants the game to stay alive... I think everybody involved with this should be ashamed of themselves, even though they got it more right than wrong. Because it doesn't look transparent. Everyone looks like a, a, either a coward or a spoiled brat or a sourpuss. And the energy, that's what horse racing is built upon. The adrenaline, the energy, the emotion. People invest their entire life into winning the Kentucky Derby. None of that was available. Not to be displayed, not to partake in, none of it. And the event for me got wrecked, totally wrecked. So my question to you is this. I don't expect you to call in about horse race. My point is, the principal matter is replay, the handling of replay. And has it gone too far in sports? And I don't have a problem with replay and horse racing when it's done effectively and correctly and authoritatively. 
That didn't happen. You had Barbara Borden duck out in a private hallway with no questions answered. She didn't have the guts to put the light on and act with the race she saw. You had two jocks who had to do it, and it took 23 minutes. Sorry, you may have gotten it right, but that's still wrong. And I'm seeing it in every sport I love now, and I've had it. 248 539 9797. I want your opinions on this. Ticket text 97136. We'll get Sully and Hatchet in, involved as well. And again, don't get lost in the horse racing. I'm bringing all sports fans together on this. I have had enough with replay. We must make it better. I'm actually at a point where I want to get rid of it. Think that over. 248 539 9797. More after this.